Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Joining me today is Dale Cook, one of the artists being featured up on the upcoming studio crawl in Fargo Moorhead. Dale, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Well, as we get started, Dale, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from and your background. I'm originally from Benoman, Minnesota, and I've lived in Fargo for 35 years or so. I've been married for 32 years. I have two adult children, so. Okay. Well, now, how did you become a wood turner? That, that's your uh, trade? Actually, from my wife taking stained glass classes from John Norman over at Lightbender Studio, and he's also, John's a wood turner, too, and as my wife was taking, doing her stained glass, she noticed he was turning some wood and uh, mentioned that she thought her husband might like to do that. So he had her uh, get a hold of me. We went over there. He put a piece of wood on a lathe for me, and within a month then I bought a lathe, and I've upgraded since then. And it, get, it gets almost addicting for he, And you've been doing it for how long now? This is seven years, beginning seven years now. So seven years, okay. Well, first off, uh, tell, tell the folks a little bit about what... Studio Crawl is in Fargo-Moorhead, and uh, when is it and what all does it entail? It's October 4th and 5th this year, and from noon to 6 o'clock, and there's 36 different studios you can, you have a map, you can go to a brochure, you can download that mm -hmm. uh, on the internet, and you can just go to how many studios you want to, or, and you can just watch people create what they, what they make, so... Yeah, well, now, you, how many artists are involved? There's, there's thirty. There's 40 some, but there's 36 studios. Some have uh, several artists in each studio. Or, okay, so there will be, but but what all, from wood turning? Oh, wood to, turning, uh, um, glass blowing, ceramics, uh, real fancy quilting stuff, uh, a lot of painting, Okay, so uh, furniture really, making, yeah, there's a lot of... Really runs a gamut of yeah. all types. So, well, but you mentioned you know people can get maps. Uh, they can download it from the internet, but yes. are, are they're also available around the town. Some uh, some of the galleries and stuff have the maps too, and some of the hotels have maps. I've noticed too. So okay. Uh, how have you seen this event uh, grow over the past few years? Have you been involved with this? It? Is my second year that okay. I've been involved. I went to them other years, mm -hmm. and I was encouraged to to try to be in it. Or so uh, it, it draws a lot of people. I was surprised how many people. We had uh, over 500 come to my place last year, so. Mm -hmm. Well, well, with that, tell us about your work uh, and exactly, you know, what's involved in wood turning. Well, I get a lot of questions that uh, I do at other art shows around the street fairs and that, but basically finding the wood. I like to harvest my own wood if I can. I go out in the woods and get it. If, if people have trees down, and I'll let a lot of people. A lot of people know I do this now, so they'll let me know if they have certain trees or whatever available in. Uh, save some logs for me. And it's basically just putting on uh, whatever shape of wood I have and uh, figuring out what I can do with that, whether it be a vase or a platter or wall hanging or uh, different shapes, try to get out of it what I can. And I, I, I have kind of a preformed idea of what I'm gonna make with a piece, but I change that a lot. Uh, well, with that, do you make a lot of, uh, do you concentrate on uh, bowls or do, uh, I don't do you, I do some open bowls and if I do if it's plain wood I'm usually looking for burls that are on trees because they have this just beautiful grain but I, if it's plain wood then I'll decorate on it by piercing different holes in it I wood burn on it I dye a lot of wood mm. and then some will be textured with different uh, carving machines and stuff to so if it's plain wood like just maple can look real plain the grain is pretty plain on just a plain piece of maple but you can decorate it out to to look completely different from well, now, you, you talked about this, but how, how long is a, is a process? Uh, it, that depends on the finish, too. It, the main process I always do is I rough turn it, so I'll, if it's a 10-inch diameter piece, I would leave it a, at least an inch thick. I'll, I'll turn it on a lathe, and as it's spinning, I'll leave about an inch thick uniform uh, thickness through there, and I soak it in a denatured alcohol to speed up the drying process, and I wrap it in a paper. So I can dry a bowl like that in about 10 days to two weeks, a closed vessel with a small hole on top takes takes longer. But then once it's dry, you put it back on the lathe and it'll have warped and stuff, the different grains pulling on it. So then you have to put it back on and you leave it thick enough so you can chew it up again. And then you can put on whatever finish you want, whether it's like a texture, just an oil finish or something. Then you can be done in one more night after that. But a lacquer finish, I do a lot of high gloss. I might dye a piece and then high gloss lacquer. And the lacquer takes another couple of weeks. Uh, you got to build up coats. I'll put about 15 coats on where it takes probably three to five nights to put that on. And then you let it set for a couple of weeks just to cure. And then you can sand and buff that down. So it, 
if it's a lacquered piece, about six weeks for one piece to get done. Wow. But w what inspires you to, I mean, you say you look at a piece of wood, do you always know what you're going to make out of it? Uh, no, no. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I, I usually have a, an idea of what I can mm -hmm. do with it. And sometimes the shape of the wood kind of dictates that too. But, uh, but I've changed it so many times and, and changed the design, you know, as I'm doing it. So. Well, now, and, and talk about the tools, uh, you know, how does the lathe, obviously you have a lathe, but talk about your tools that it takes to do this. Uh, different turners use different tools. I use cutting tools. And I do use some, a lot of, a lot of guys will use scrapers. And I, I'll use them for certain situations, but a cutting tool like a bowl gouge and spindle gouges and, and different hollowing tools. Uh, there's, there's a lot of tools you can get, but uh, I'll, I'll usually use a cutting tool to do, to do that kind of stuff. Now, with, with your work, uh, do you sell your work? Or, I mean, do people contact you to say, I want you to make a, whatever, a bowl for me or whatever, or, or do you simply display these items and people see what they want? Uh, both ways, and I have a website and uh, business cards. I'll do at art shows that I they do around. They'll contact me from there. If they have a special piece of wood that uh, I just delivered one last night to a lady that her apple tree had come down, so she saved a piece of it and got a hold of me, and I made her a vase. And another person called the same type thing. One brought a huge log in the back of their van from out by Bismarck's to, to make something, but it came from her farm at when she was growing up. So, yeah. Well, now you mentioned some different types of wood. What 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 type of wood do you enjoy working with, and what are the differences? In, in trying to work with the different uh, types of wood, any the burl wood is what it, wood turners look for because that's got the it's almost a marbly type grain to it. It's, it's really beautiful. And then uh, around here, ash uh, box elder has a lot of burl on it. Ash has some oak oak burl and and just plain woods too. And there's some elm uh, cottonwood. It seems to be quite a bit around. And certain woods are easier to work with, like the apple vase I did. Uh, Fruit woods tend to crack very easy, so you got to be careful on how you dry them and stuff too to to get them done without cracking. And now, is, is this a, is this your full time job or no? I work construction. Okay, so other than that, yeah, and I do this evenings and weekends and so evenings and weekends. And, and as we were talking uh, before we came on, you said this can be pretty addicting. Oh yeah, I'll go out at <laughs> at five at night, and pretty soon I'll I'll go in the house, and it'll be nine thirty or ten o'clock, and I, it, it'll seem like an hours went by, but. Now, is wood the only thing you work with? No, I also do alabaster on a lathe, uh, Italian alabaster or Colorado alabaster. I, I buy that out of Colorado in Fort Collins, uh, and that's a that's you use uh, different tools for that. that. That's all scrapers that you use, and you scrape it away. It's kind of like a flowery salt thing that comes across. It can be kind of messy. I have a big dust collector. If you position that right, uh, it's not too bad. So, and that you can sand out, and then. Uh, Finish to a really high gloss too, and and then put either a wood rim on it. I'll do some carving on the alabaster too with some power tools. And so the alabaster is just a chunk of. Uh, it's a next stone softer than marble, but it, but yeah, I, I take a. I'll save some of the tendons that I cut off of a vase, and smooth them up that I can grab onto with a, a big chuck that I have. Glue that onto a piece of stone that I've that I've made as smooth as I can, and then that'll hold it on till I. And you leave the tail stock held on the the back part of the lathe until you get some of the weight off and get it balanced better, and then that glue will hold it on till, till you get it done. Now, sort of as you look at things and you do things, what, what inspires you? Uh, I sometimes just looking across. I did one uh, piece a while ago that I just noticed the fields, uh, you know, the furrowed plowed fields. So I I, I wire brushed it or sandblasted or where it almost looks like the same same type of uh, surface as what you see in the field, or you, you notice different textures uh, on buildings even or something, or you try to put that on a wood surface. Or mm -hmm. Now, in a given week, month, I don't know, how many pieces do you turn out or do you create? Uh, I could probably rough turn, you know, half a dozen or a dozen at night, depending on the size. You know, I tend to do bigger pieces, you know, 10 to 12 inches tall, that. And that's harder to, if you're hollowing them out. Right? What I like to do best is vases or vessel with a small opening, and I'll put a finial on of exotic wood or something. But if open bowls, you can turn those out pretty quick, and then you, 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 then you have to let them dry and put them back on. But for me, the the creating the piece with the wet wood, the real green wood, it cuts really nice, and that's 
that's the fun part. The rest turns into work after it's dried out and the sanding and. When I, do you, do you, have you had exhibits? Do you, you know, obviously exhibit your work or how, how do you display them for the public so they can see uh, it? Plains Art Museum has them. In fact, they have a, a preview now for the Plains Art Museum where everybody has a piece there and different, uh, all send pieces, different exhibitions they have are like Rochester, Minnesota. I had one on wood turners. They had some national wood turners and then there's a jury thing where you can put in for, in some uh, couple galleries around too and put some pieces in there. And, well, uh, let's talk about the arts community in, in the Fargo Moorhead, uh, you know, and, and how how vibrant is it? it, it it's really nice, and they, they, for me, I've I've only been doing selling this stuff for three four years, but they're everybody's very helpful too. You know, you give you pointers this or that or that, uh, but there's there's so many different types of art that I wasn't even aware of too at the time when I started getting into this. So. All right. So you're participating in, in the Studio Crawl, which mm -hmm. is uh, October 4th and 5th, yep. and people will come to, to your, is yep. it going to be your garage yep. then? And what, what, what can they see when they come? Um, what do they I'll, expect to see when I'll they I'll be demonstrating up? the entire time. Uh, I set up a tent with the finished products just outside of there, but I have a, uh, it's, it's a large building people can come into, and then uh, they can watch me or ask any questions that they have, uh, you know, the whole process of, and I try to do the process that they can see the easiest where I'm cutting on the outside of something. If I'm just hollowing a piece, you really can't see what the tool is doing inside of the a vessel. So I try to do the outside stuff and a, a bunch of that where they can see how it's shaping, how the wood cuts. Do, do, are, are children interested in oh, this? Oh, yes, they they're come? very interested. Now, last year we had a couple, uh, small, a lot of small kids, two of the whole families come out. And then I had a couple of high school kids that were interested, and there's a wood turning club in town, Mid Deck Wood Turners. There's about 75 members there, and a couple of those uh, high school kids came over to the meetings too. So it's kind of nice to encourage them to do this too. Well, Dale, we, we thank you for joining us today. We actually we got Michael Dunn going to come in and talk a little more about his his uh, artwork, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at Studio Crawl. Well, thank you. Thank you. Right now, let's take a look at some of the work. Joining us now is Michael Dunn, another artist being featured in the studio, Carl, coming up in Fargo-Moorhead. Michael, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, as we were looking there, uh, we saw some of Dale's work and, of course, some of, uh, of your work. And we'll t talk about that in a minute. First off, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, I'm a visual arts educator at Moorhead High School in Moorhead, Minnesota, and uh, a practicing professional artist. Okay. Well, uh, where, where are you from? I'm, originally, I'm from Fargo originally. You're originally, mm -hmm. okay. We saw some of your work on the videos I mentioned. What, what inspires your work and, and what do you paint? Well, I guess I'm a naturalist painter. I do a lot of landscapes uh, throughout the country. I travel down to, uh, the past five years I've been traveling down to northern New Mexico painting with pastel. Uh, different subject matter each time I go down. I'll study a particular thing such as architecture or people or uh, landscapes, that type of thing. Currently, I'm working on a body of work of prairie landscapes using non-contemporary colors and uh, just having a lot of fun with that on a large scale, uh, three by four foot large scale canvases. Okay, so large scale. Is there particular types of paints or, or that you work with mostly? Or? Currently, I'm working in acrylic. Uh, being an art educator, I work in a lot of different mediums or I need to know a lot of different mediums. So uh, depending on what the subject is, what my intent is, I, I then pick the medium to work in, which is most conducive for that. Well, I asked Dale in the first half of the show to talk some about uh, Studio Crawl, 
but uh, tell us what people can experience from that. Uh, the Studio Crawl is an amazing uh, uh, event. Uh, it's an opportunity for the community in the metro area and around the area to come in and see what, what practicing professionals do, uh, how they live in their, in their studios and, and the things that they do and the process it takes to create a piece of art. You know, in a gallery you see the finished piece, but to walk in and see where this piece is created is quite interesting and educational for all levels, kids through adults. Well, now, what, what painters have inspired you, and, and you know, can you put a finger on exactly what style yours is? Well, you know, to be defined as a style, to me, uh, uh, I don't really care for that. I'm kind of a dabbler, I guess. I like working in a lot of different mediums, styles based on what, I, what I'm interested in. People who have influenced me, obviously, some of the historical people, Rembrandt, uh, uh, Van Gogh, some of those masters, along with uh, Andrew Wyeth. Uh, my big influence is, is location. Um, going down to northern New Mexico and, and uh, painting and meeting a lot of those artists has been a, been a big influence in my palette uh, thus far. Well now, how do you uh, display your work so the public can see it? I have a studio gallery in my home and um, I exhibit work around in, in North Dakota, different galleries and so forth. Okay. Now, well, you probably already answered this question, but how, how much of a full-time job versus part-time job is this? It's 24-7. I'm very fortunate to be a visual arts educator and, and a practicing professional because it's, it's, uh, it's a 24-7 thing. I'm very fortunate not to have to uh, go home and change my thought process. Mm -hmm. A big factor for me is, is learning from my students and, and uh, conveying my, myself, my struggles and, and gains as an artist is, is very educational for them as well. Good. Uh, can you t talk? Let's talk some about a little bit about what goes into putting on the studio crawl event. It's exciting, you know. It's behind the scenes things that we do as artists. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, there's a lot of preparation for that. Um, uh, whether it's preparing your your, uh, your exhibits, uh, your your flyers, uh, cleaning up your studio, <laughs> organizing that mess that. Uh, uh, is is interesting as well. What's really fortunate is the Studio Crawl and the FMVA and they're promoting how they promote this. It's such a uh, they really put an effort into this, and, and obviously anybody in business knows marketing is the key. So uh, it's a lot of work behind the scenes, but it, it all comes together. Well, I asked Dale this question, but I, I'd like to ask you talk some about the arts community in Fargo Moorhead and, and uh, the, well, I say the vibrancy of it, but your opinion of of it. Well, you know, Fargo-Moorhead, you know, it, it's one of those best-kept secrets. It's, uh, the art community here is, is amazing. There is, you know, we, we have this idea that the big artists and the famous artists and, and the, the good artists have to be from a, a larger community, but there's some outstanding creative people ranging from two-dimensional, three-dimensional art, crafts, uh, those type of things. So it's really nice, uh, this opportunity to show the community that what, what we do here. And, and how and the level of quality of work we have here. Well, and the quality, of, but but is it also frustrating at times in terms of of the the whole struggling artist uh, concept? Well, yeah, but you know, at this stage of my life, that's not an issue anymore. I don't. Not saying I sell millions of paintings, but uh, most of us artists create art for art's sake, and uh, uh, to make a living off it would maybe be a different story. But uh, um, at this stage, I it is a struggle. But you have to make that commitment and. and uh, like Dale said, it's a passion. It, it's something that a lot of people don't understand. The need to create or put a mark on a canvas or to turn some wood or, or make a quilt. It's, it's, it's beyond that. Well, Michael, uh, you know, we, we talked about uh, what, what got you started. I mean, obviously, you, it, it's pretty much your life now, it sounds like. Pretty but, much. But yeah. what, how did you get interested at a young age? Or? Well, you know, I heard you mention off, off uh, uh, camera that uh, you're, not a very, you're not very good at this. Well, the fact of the matter is we're all born creative. I, I tell my students, we, you all go your direction. I happen to, uh, this happened to be something that I pursued. It, I had some success, uh, whether it's just developing self-confidence or whatever. But uh, it's been doing all my life, and uh, I guess I'll continue it. <laughs> well, now, can you, have, you, have you had a chance then, there, there are 36 studios that are going to be right. uh, premiered or, mm -hmm. or highlighted in the right. studio crawl. Mm -hmm. How long have you been involved with This is my second year. Your second um, year. I, I've been around and watched, gone to them prior to this, but this is the second, my year, second year of involvement with it. Well, and that was going to be my question. Have you had the opportunity to visit some of these other sites, and, and what can people expect to see when they, when they visit, a, a, well, mm -hmm. your studio in particular, but other studios? Well, again, the, the, such a variety. And, and how different artists and crafters, uh, you know, how they set up their wares and, or how they set up their studio to, to create what they create. Um, also, different conversations with, with each artist. That, you know, they each have their own different uh, way of explaining what they do. Well, uh, with that, uh, I, I, I talked about 
how many pieces, and of course for you as a painter, uh, I, I don't know, you know what, in, what, it, what inspires you to do a painting. Do you decide I'm gonna go out and do this landscape or do you ride around, take pictures? So, so what inspires you to, to choose what you're gonna do next? Well, most artists will concentrate on a specific uh, a subject, for example, this period of landscapes now. I'll spend probably three or four years on this, maybe longer, to study the, the landscapes and the uniqueness of our area, studying, playing with non-traditional colors. Um, when I go down to New Mexico, I spend five years just strictly in pastel, studying that medium, studying color. Uh, so that's the way I treat it. Um, as far as picking up a subject or what should I paint next, um, I really can't answer that because it just comes to me. If I, um, uh, if I want to study some florals or grapes or whatever, so I, I challenge new things. I try to treat it as a, I mentioned my students today in the painting class that I, I'm a student. I was showing them an example of my work and they were all odd about it, excited about it, and, and I said, look, I'm still a student as well. So that's the way I treat it, and if I'm fortunate enough to pull off what my intent is, that's that's great. Yeah, but and I, I, and I realize I, this question is going to sound ignorant to some degree, but but I mean, in a month's time, do you do, are you working on numerous pieces? Do you concentrate on one piece? I'll have probably four pieces going in my studio, uh, different directions. Whether I'm working watercolor, oil, acrylic, pastel, uh, and it's nice to have three or four pieces going on because you can you, you get your mind off it, and, and as you're working on one, you're subconsciously thinking of another. It, it's just a constant evolution. Uh, to start and finish one at a time is Sometimes you get stuck and you don't know how to fix it, so uh, it, it helps to constantly, constantly, I constantly create art. It's constant, whether I'm thinking about it or drawing or painting, and then... So much like a writer, you can have painter's block and... Oh, and absolutely. Stuff. So, and what gets you out of that? Just work, going to another project and working on it? Having another one going on and thinking about that, and again, as I'm working on a piece, I'll glance over to another piece and you can see, see the answer. We use, it, we use a term, uh, and I tell this to my students, which is kind of silly, but it's the truth. Let your painting talk to you. It'll tell you what you need. Hmm. And like uh, they shake their head, and, but that's, you know, that's <laughs> well, us artists. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit more just quickly about Studio Crawl. You've got uh, mm -hmm. one of the pamphlets in front of you, and uh, different things, of course, have already taken place. Unfortunately, right. they're not going to get to do the preview, but uh, right. they've had opportunities. So... Uh, what would you encourage people to do when they get out and, and travel these different studios? Well, again, the focus is on the visual arts studios, but we have theater, we have plays going on in the community, things for children, uh, studio crawl, pre well, that, as you mentioned, is gone. Uh, kid crawl, the Rembrandt etching and sketch it at the Plains. So there's a variety of different things. Um, uh, medieval uh, illuminations and, and face smiles, um, a lot of different stuff beyond that. but. Uh, the, the people, once they get on that, follow the map, and it's, it's kind of like a treasure hunt and see what, uh, what, what's up next. Well, much as I asked Dale, and I can see, I can see him demonstrating turning wood, mm -hmm. but for you, uh, I mean, will you uh, do a painting, and, or how, how, what will you do in, in your demonstrations? Well, I'll have a painting, a couple paintings in progress, and my paint set up, but usually what happens is you get into so much, so much conversation, and I take them through my studio, and they ask questions about how this piece evolved, and, and this and that, so occasionally I'll put a mark on a canvas, but it's, uh, it's again, just kind of, for me, it's a setup, and they can to see the, the, me the mess at the easel and the brushes and all that, it really puts a connection to the, the whole evolution of a piece of work. Okay, so I get part of my question was, so you, in, it, cause, uh, it goes on for two days, mm -hmm. so it's not like come by at three o'clock and from three to five you'll do a painting no. from start to finish. Uh, no, and no, of course, no. it wouldn't be completely wouldn't finished. Wouldn't be finished, but, no. No longer than that. But at least that. You know, you, you keep mention, mentioning uh, young people and, mm -hmm. and uh, getting people inspired and, and, and you've actually told us some different things that you're learning from them and you hope they're learning from you, but what is the advice you'd like to give for young artists that are just starting out? Well, the, I guess, first of all, to, to, to empty your cup of knowledge and continually grow. Uh, we have this idea that we hit a certain plane and then we stop and we, we just keep that little recipe going on. And to me, it's a constant evolution and challenging and trying new things. Um, having fun with it. Don't. Uh, you know, often, too often, I think a lot of young artists get the cart before the horse. You know, they, they want to sell before they serve their master, and, and it's very easy to do. But just keep growing, work on your on your craft, and that will take care of itself. Um, and if you have that mindset, it's you enjoy it. You're not. Uh, and for people like me who haven't discovered our artistic talent yet, there's still hope for it. Okay, I'm going to give you a little. little right. Here's the truth: if you're capable of writing your name, you're capable of learning how to draw, because all you do is bend a line when you're writing your name. Correct. That is correct. That is the truth. Well, 
All right, tell us again, studio crawl, when does it take place? And what are, what are the hours? Or okay, times, really? okay, make sure I get this right. It's October uh, 4th and 5th from noon to 6. Noon to 6, and they can visit 36 studios. 36 studios and enjoy, have some, uh, all, many of the artists will have little, little treats there and so forth. That always helps to bring them in. So. And finally, if people want more information about your work, and uh, where they can purchase or where they can They can that. come to my studio or studiodonline.com, my website. Well, Michael, we appreciate you and, of course, Dale both for coming in and talking about Studio Crawl and look forward to it and hope it's a great success uh, again. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, that's all we have for this week. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>